okay uh hi guys um this is Shrikant here uh today i'll be going over uh the solution for the problem at square uh that happened in the recent long october long challenge on code chef uh before i uh get to the problem i just like to quickly remind you of uh an of the an academy uh subscription program which is partnered with code chef uh, and I mean, an academy and coach have partnered together to give you uh, a curated set of courses on competitive programming. Uh, in this, in these courses, you uh, have uh, the best educators. I mean, educators that are very good at competitive programming. So we have uh, like Arjun P's and I, IOI Medlist. There are uh, ICPC will find this, and then. Uh, top uh, engineers from companies like Google and Flipkart as well. So uh, they'll be taking live sessions for you. So you'll be able to interact with them in during these live sessions. And uh, you can get any doubts that you have clarified and you can learn uh, many topics. And apart from this, you get uh, a curated uh, set of practice problems also uh, that you can practice in your free time. And then there are TAs who will uh, clarify your doubts uh, on the discussion forum and the Discord server, etc. So uh, please check it out if you haven't yet. And uh, it's a paid subscription. You have to pay uh, about 2000 a month, but there are other plans for six months and uh, a year subscription as well. Uh, yeah, so uh, that's it about the subscription program. Let's get to the problem uh, at Square. Uh, this was an interesting problem, but uh, I mean, there were not a lot of complicated observations, but uh, the intended solution uses a uh, bit set, or at least all solutions I know of uses a uh, bit set. So uh, that's like uh, a prerequisite, I mean, not a prerequisite for the video, but for the problem, I'll be going over uh, what bit sets are and why they are efficient in this video. Uh, but if you knew about bit sets, then uh, this is fairly, uh, I would say, easy to medium problem. Uh, so uh, let me remind you of the problem statement. Uh, so you have uh, n vertical lines, and then you have uh, m horizontal lines, uh, like so. Okay, and uh, these are uh, infinite lines. So uh, this uh, vertical line corresponds to the equation uh, uh, x equal to c. And then the horizontal line corresponds to the equation y equal to c. So you're given uh, the value of c. And so you, you can imagine these uh, vertical lines and horizontal lines. Uh, they intersect with each other and they form uh, rectangles and squares, right? So this is one plus rectangle, this is another rectangle. Okay, so uh, what you are asked to find is uh, you have to consider consider all squares that are formed uh, from these horizontal and vertical lines, and then uh, find their area. Okay. So there are uh, a number of squares that are that could be formed. We have to find their area, and then you have to find uh, the number of squares with uh, the number of distinct areas. So you could have uh, number of distinct areas, and uh, this is what you want to find. But you're also allowed to add you are allowed to add one extra horizontal line, okay? 
and this horizontal line must be between uh, zero and a given value h. Yeah, you're uh, allowed to add one extra horizontal line. And then you, you, your objective is to maximize the number of distinct uh, areas of squares that are formed as a result of these vertical and horizontal lines. So you already have uh, n vertical lines and n horizontal line that form some squares. Uh, you have to add one extra horizontal line and you have to find the maximum number of distinct areas of squares that you can obtain. Uh, and the question is, which line do you have to add? And you, uh, there's an additional constraint that the line that you have add must be within zero and h. Okay. So uh, firstly, uh, let me. Okay. So uh, how many distinct uh, or how many? Uh, rectangles or squares are formed. Like how to count them. Okay, so uh, in this, let's say we have three horizontal lines and two vertical lines. So I have uh, two squares here. Okay. Or I have one, two, uh, three. So the actual of three rectangles, not squares, uh, three rectangles. Uh, and so for uh, N and, oh sorry, uh, N and M, what would the number of rectangles be or how to count them? So, so if you look at how the rectangles are formed, uh, every rec uh, rectangle has uh, two vertical lines and it has two horizontal lines. And these vertical and horizontal lines must be amongst the n vertical lines and m horizontal lines that we drew, right? So this must be part of some horizontal of some pair of horizontal and vertical lines. Okay. So every rectangle that's possible or that's created in this diagram must contain uh, two vertical and two horizontal lines, right? And uh, the two vertical lines must be among the M vertical lines that we had, and the two horizontal lines must be among the N horizontal lines that we had. So, uh, right, and let's think about the other way, okay? So if we choose any two vertical lines and any two horizontal lines, they will create a rectangle. Uh, so, for example, if we can something like this. So choose any pair of horizontal lines okay. and any pair of vertical lines. Let's say we choose this pair. That corresponds to a rectangle in the diagram. Okay. So every rectangle corresponds to a pair of horizontal lines and a pair of vertical lines. And we can call this as pair as well, a pair of a pair of horizontal and a pair of vertical lines. Okay, so uh, that gives you the number of rectangles because every rectangle must be generated this way. And the number of pairs of horizontal lines is n2, nc2. And the number of pairs of vertical lines is MC2. So the total number of rectangles that we have are NC2 into MC2. And how to generate them, uh, that's also obvious. Like just take a pair of rectangle and vertical and you get the corresponding rectangle and their sides would be, so if you chose, uh, let me denote Y equal to, V1 and Y equal to V2 by these lines, okay? And then let's say uh, X equal to H1 and X equal to, or rather it would be better to have 
H1, H2 here, and V1, V2 here. So if you add, uh, if the chosen lines were x equal to v1, x equal to v2, and y equal to h1 and y equal to h2, then the width of the triangle, uh, the sides of the triangle are v1 minus v2, or absolute value, I should say, and h1 minus h2. Okay, so these are the sides of the rectangle. So now, um, right, so, what, what, one thing that we know that we should know is uh, v1 and v2 are integers, so the sides are obviously integers as well. Uh, so, so we can easily count, uh, or we can easily visit all the rectangles and uh, see how many of them squares and count the distant areas, uh, areas etc. But we also have, but we also have the option of adding another line another horizontal line within zero and C, okay? Or uh, zero and H, sorry, okay? So within zero and H, we can add some horizontal line like so, and that will create uh, a whole new set of uh, rectangles. So that will create NC2, uh, sorry, uh, rather MC2 extra rectangles, which we have to consider, okay? And, uh, Again, the goal is to uh, maximize uh, the number of uh, distinct areas that we have. Okay. Uh, right. Uh, so, whenever we add the horizontal line, we hope to make squares. Okay. So, that's the only reason we will want to add another line. But we have an option of adding. We might not add also, but I mean, adding a line will not reduce the number of squares that are formed. So we will try to add something. Uh, but uh, about the lines that you're adding, we want to add them so that more squares are formed, right? And uh, we are allowed to add only one line. Let's say we add y equal to h. If we add y equal to h, then we get uh, some new rectangles, right? Uh, we get uh, H minus H1, H minus H2, H1. These are valid pairs for uh, the new rectangles that we create. And uh, this is uh, the height, I should say. Uh, the length would be uh, the same, uh, VI minus VJ. So uh, if I add a new line y equal to h, I'm I could I'm creating these uh, M MC two extra rectangles, and their side lengths are uh, mod v i minus v j with h minus h one, h minus h two, etc. Uh, right. Uh, so uh, we want squares, right? We are considered, we are bothered only about squares. So for squares, uh, these two differences must be equal. So, time for a new slide here. Okay. Uh, let's say H1, H2, HN, and V1, V2, so on to VM. So uh, we want squares. So we want pairs such that uh, vi minus vj is equal to, let's say, hk minus hl, Oops, absolute values. And we're going to add another line, okay? When we add another the other line, we get, again, some extra candidates, some extra triangles. So uh, extra rectangles, sorry, uh, extra rectangles that are formed. And we want those extra rectangles to form to be uh, squares as well. Uh, so the possible sides of the squares are already decided by the vertical lines, right? Because uh, one side of the square must be equal to the difference between the vertical ones. okay? So all squares that form must be integer sides. Uh, 
And since they must be integer sites, the line that we add, uh, th that line's uh, y, co uh, y coordinate must also be an integer because we want uh, this guy to also be an integer, only then it can be equal to di minus vj, right? And so we will only add uh, lines at integer points, okay? And we are bounded, uh, the question says that we have to choose the, the line that we add must be between zero and h. So we have only h possibilities to add, right? So now we have uh, a brute force solution, okay? Uh, for each possible, for each possible line that I can add, okay? Uh, enumerate all uh, rectangles or squares, okay? And uh, find their area. Uh, well, if the area must be of two squares, it must be different. Their size must also be different because area is just size square. So uh, we don't have to find the area, just the side is enough. Uh, find their side lengths. And once we find the side lengths, we can calculate the number of distinct side lengths and we can get the maximum of all. So this is uh, the brief outline of the solution. Uh, which we have to optimize. So uh, obviously yeah, we have NC2 into MC2 possibilities. There's too much, so it's like M squared M squared, which is, uh, yeah, we don't want to enumerate all the tangles and squares. So we have to find a better way to uh, go over these, right? Uh, so the first optimization, uh, first obvious thing is that we don't have to consider every pair uh, of the vertical lines and every pair of the horizontal lines, right? Because we can uh, pre-calculate the difference between uh, all pairs of differences between the vertical lines and we can have candidate side lengths. Okay, so uh, set one, let's say, uh, or I'll call it set B is, the set of all differences, okay? And this is only uh, M squared. So go over all pairs of, uh, go over all pairs of uh, vertical lines, find all the differences. So these are candidate side lengths for squares, okay? So every uh, possible square that happens in the diagram must uh, have a side length of one of these values, right? because uh, the, uh, these values are the lengths of the, all the rectangles that are found in the diagram. And so uh, the, if any square exists in the figure, it must be one of these, okay? And then we can have a set H, which is uh, one less of H minus HI. Uh, okay, uh, HI minus HT again. But here uh, we include the, the line that we add. Okay, so we are, for each possible line that we add, uh, let us see equal to zero to H. Let's fix that. And then we can uh, find a set H for each uh, choice of C. Uh, again, we have O of N squared possible sites, side ones. Uh, we can enumerate uh, all of them. And if uh, we do that, so we can take any side length here and any side length here and combine them, that will be a square, uh, that will be a rectangle. And if you want a square, let's uh, iterate through all sides here in this set and search for uh, that side length here, okay? So like that, we can get uh, all possible squares that can be formed and uh, their side lengths, of course and we can find the uh, number of distinct uh, squares, uh, square or square areas or square size that can be formed uh, using this procedure. So about time complexity, it's, um, yeah, it's a bit uh, uh, 
uh, bad because uh, here already we are enumerating uh, n square possible uh, segments. Uh, again, this is also n square possible segments we are evaluating. And then uh, for each element here, we have to figure out if uh, we have to find the intersection of these two sets, basically. Uh, which would be the possible candidate squares. Uh, and so, so the answer is just the size of the intersection of these two sets okay, for each hedge. And uh, the, all this can be done in uh, O of n squared plus n squared. Uh, but that is too, uh, we cannot afford to do that and certainly we can afford to do that for each possible line as well. So, um, but, but at least we have a working solution to optimize. Okay, so we're going to optimize this uh, solution. Uh, one thing that we can notice is that although we have n squared possibilities here, like we can choose any vi and any vj, we can subtract them and take the value. So we have, although we have n squared candidates, what could the possible values of uh, the absolute value of vi minus vj be? Uh, we know from the constraint that vi is between uh, zero and v, uh, zero and uh, wi would be, right? So uh, the difference vi minus vj will also be between zero and w. Right. Although there are n squared possible side lengths, uh, n squared side lengths for us to evaluate, uh, the number of distinct side lengths is only w. Right. So, uh, so, so that's a nice observation to make, and we will work on that. Uh, and similarly, here we have uh, this guy can only be between zero to hedge, right? Because uh, we, we are given that all the hedge eyes are within zero to hedge. And so the difference also, uh, the magnitude of the difference also will be between zero to hedge, right? So uh, at this point, let's make a frequency table or uh, we don't even need a frequency, we need a, Present table, present height. Okay. Let's say it's an array of size H. Okay. And uh, present height of H is equal to one if uh, there exists some pair of HIHJ such that their difference is H and zero otherwise. Okay. So uh, why do we need this array? Well, with this array, we can find out, uh, this is an array that stores the set of candidate H, right? So uh, if there exists a pair of uh, horizontal, uh, lines with a uh, difference H. Uh, we can store this array to maintain that information. Okay. Uh, how is it useful? Uh, let's move over here. So initially, let's say uh, present height of H is zero for everything. And we can update it like so. Or I put it on H. Uh, or uh, j equal to, uh, I wouldn't say hedge, I would say uh, horizontal line or uh, let's say hedge is in a horizontal line for j, for every pair, it's another horizontal line. Uh, present height of say hi, hj 
hi minus fj equal to one. So we can set this to be one for every pair of lines that we have. And this takes uh, complexity uh, in square. There were n horizontal lines. So this takes complexity in square. And similarly, we can have a present uh, width array for all the i and the j pairs. Again, f1 and any merging that would be all of them square. And uh, we can use this information uh, to calculate the number of distinct squares already present. So uh, what would, let's call that percent square array. Percent square array uh, of size minimum of h comma w. That uh, of s will be one if there exists a square with size s and zero otherwise. Okay. Um, how do you calculate percent square of s? Well, uh, for each uh, height and width, if uh, percent square of s equals percent height of s and percent width of s. So we have three uh, Boolean arrays, percent height, percent width. Okay, we spent a lot of time calculating these uh, arrays. We will get to how to optimize that a bit later. But what we, what I want uh, to emphasize here is we have three Boolean arrays. And uh, essentially what we're doing here is uh, similar to uh, bitwise AND, right? Uh, every Boolean array, you can think of every Boolean array as a huge integer, right? Because uh, of ones and zeros, every array of ones and zeros, you can think of it uh, as an integer. And then essentially what this statement is doing is a bitwise AND operator, uh, a bitwise AND on these two sets, on these two big, huge numbers, percent height and percent width. And there's a an optimized data structure in almost all programming languages. It's implemented called bit set. Okay. And uh, here I would like to remind you that uh, if almost every operation uh, in all programming languages is implemented using uh, fundamental a uh, fundamental bitwise operations, right? So these are and or XOR uh, uh, and then you have not operator. Uh, so, yeah, so there are a bunch of uh, bitwise operators that are uh, fundamental for the architecture of any program. So these operations, uh, bitwise operations are very fast. Okay, partly because uh, other operations like plus minus, they depend on they indirectly use these operations in the implementation. So these are uh, fundamental operations in the architecture. Okay, and these are uh, very fast. Uh, not to say that addition and subtraction operations are not so fast. I mean, practically for a single operations, you can't tell the difference between these two, uh, but uh, arithmetic operators are a tad bit slower than bitwise operators uh, and uh, even amongst arithmetic operations, like multiplication is a bit slower. Uh, division and uh, mod are uh, a bit more heavy. Okay, so these are fast, uh, sorry, uh, fast tests, uh, a bit reasonably fast, not so fast. Okay, and these are like the fundamental operations. Okay, so these are very fast. Uh, so uh, coming back here, we have a Boolean array. Okay, and we are doing uh, bitwise operators on this Boolean array. And uh, again, so uh, bitwise and or 
uh, XOR are very fast. Okay. So it makes uh, sense uh, to store these. Uh, so how many values, this is uh, percent square, percent type, percent width, they are all arrays, right? Uh, they are arrays of size uh, W, H, and okay, let's say minimum of H, W. So uh, these are large numbers, right? Uh, I guess this is 10 by 5. Uh, right, so we can store the entire Boolean array as an integer and apply bitwise operations. So that's not practical because uh, long, long is the maximum support or int128 is there, but uh, long, long is a reasonable uh, support for integers where you can use bitwise operators uh, and they are 64 bit. Okay. So the idea is uh, this. Okay. So since these operations are fast, the bitwise and operations are fast. Uh, let's represent uh, the array uh, height and width in blocks of size 64. Okay. Okay. So we're going to split the size hedge array into blocks of size 64. Like so, and each sixty uh, block is a sixty-four uh, length uh, boolean array. Okay, and this you can think of it as a number. Okay, and uh, you can do bitwise. So, and this operation that we have here is equivalent to equal if you represent it in this format doing this operation in the equivalent block representation would be only n by 64 or h by 64 bitwise ends. Okay, so we broke them down into blocks of size 64. And uh, let's say this is the height array and this is the vertical array. Okay. Earlier, what we did, we took each bit separately and we did the AND operation for that and we stored it in a new square array. Okay, But if we break them down into blocks of size 64, then we would only be doing H by 64 ANDs instead of H ANDs. Reduce the time complexity of our program. And uh, you don't have to implement this breaking down into blocks of size 64 stuff. Uh, there's uh, an inbuilt library in C++ and in Java and most other languages uh, called BitSet. Okay. And you can invoke it using, uh, so the library is uh, included using this. Or of course, uh, BitSetCD C++ contains this as well. Uh, this contains everything, but in particular, this is the library and you can, uh, and this implements uh, the usual Boolean op uh, all bitwise operations. Uh, and or XOR uh, left shift, uh, right shift, okay. And uh, uh, other trivial operations like set, reset uh, set of v will uh, make v bit one okay, and reset of v will make v bit zero so internally uh, what's happening is uh, there's a split into blocks outside 64 and so on but uh, we don't need to know that implementation stuff but just know that uh, every operation so and or and xor operations of uh, on a size n array, uh, all these operations are uh, O of n by 64. Okay. So um, going by that, how do we optimize this? Well, uh, let's think about it, right? 
so when we are doing when we are iterating through all uh, so so let's say we have initially we have a boolean array uh, height of h will be one if the horizontal line y equal to h exists and zero otherwise. Okay. So earlier uh, we iterated through all possible pairs of heights that were in already present. Here we're going to explicitly construct this array. Okay. Uh, it seems a bit counterintuitive because earlier you only stored those heights that were present in the array, but here you're storing uh, h. Uh, we know the height will be from zero to h, right? Capital H, h is given as input. So for all these values from zero to h, you're storing uh, this Boolean uh, array okay? uh, of ones and zeros. One meaning that that particular height is present, zero meaning it doesn't exist. So uh, yeah. Uh, once we have this height array, how to obtain uh, the present uh, height? Okay. Let's go over. Uh, so, so initially, again, present height is zero. Okay, the empty, like nothing is set. It's a, a bit set of size H. Uh, for every horizontal line, okay. Uh, we want to make, uh, let's say, hi, okay. We want to make hi minus uh, hj to be one. Uh, hi minus hj bit one in present height. Okay. So how do we do that? Uh, well, what we can do is we already have the height uh, boolean right. So by left shifting this array, left shift by hi you get a bo another Boolean array, which has uh, these elements set, modulus of hi minus hj, okay? So uh, by, left, by left shifting uh, the initial height Boolean array by hi, we get these numbers. And all we have to do is present height or bitwise r with uh, height left shifted by hi, okay? So this operation is n by 64. This operation is n by 64, uh, h by 64, let's say, uh, right? h by 64, and there are h different values. So this uh, entire for loop takes h squared by 64. Okay, earlier it was uh, n squared, which could be in worst case head square, but now uh, it's head square by 64, which is uh, which is optimal enough or fast enough to get our program to run within time, to, to make this part of the program run in time. Okay, so let's do the same thing for uh, the vertical lines as well. Okay, so we got present height in h power 64. Again, we can get uh, present width in w square by 64, right? And um, right. And then now the question is how to deal with uh, which horizontal line to add. So if we add a horizontal line, uh, 
y equal to c what happens right so essentially what we're doing is we're making one update of this type okay essentially we're adding uh, uh here we updated our height h times right by uh doing this operation all we have to do is we have to add this line y equal to c so let's say new uh, candidates for height that the addition to this horizontal line added will be the initial list of heights that were there uh, left shifted by c okay and then uh, so this will give you uh, c minus uh, so this will give you uh, h minus c okay where hi was uh, one of the initial points okay the other uh, set that you will have to add is uh, hi plus c okay so uh, those are candidates as well so uh, sorry say c minus hi okay so we have y equal to c here for all hi's below uh, the difference would be uh, c minus hi and for all hi's later the difference would be hi minus c okay uh, these give you the candidates hi minus c because i'm shifting the boolean array to the left Okay, so to get, uh, how can you get C minus HI? Well, to get C minus HI, we can maintain uh, reverse height. Uh, height. Maintain heights in reverse and then shift that right by C. Okay, so this is almost same as minus H plus C. Okay, so uh, store another bitwise a Boolean operator for minus H. And uh, let's call that height reverse. Okay. And you have to shift that right by, uh, so, 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 so the indexing will be uh, a bit uh, different. So minus C would be stored in uh, H minus C. So you would shift this right by capital H minus C to, to maintain the uh, indexing. But essentially what you're doing is uh, similar to what's there here and uh, new candidates or equal to this, okay? Or this or this, uh, or operator with this Boolean array and this Boolean array will give you new candidates. Once you get the new candidates array, the set of uh, possible squares that you can get would be uh, present squares, bitwise or with the new candidates. Okay. Again, this is uh, n by 64 or h by 64. Okay, and uh, this is a, again, a bit set. And all we have to do is we have to count the number of ones. So that's uh, there as an inbuilt function called count, which also works in n by 64. So all operations or uh, XR and etc. they're all n by 64. Okay, so uh, the total complexity here is again, uh, for h different possibilities, you calculate the distinct squares that are present so, like so, okay. So it's essentially inserting uh, equivalent to inserting a new horizontal line in our procedure here, where we found uh, all possible pairs of heights that could be present. And so uh, the procedure is again uh, co of h square by sixty four. Uh, so the entire thing is uh, h square by sixty four. Uh, so let's say h uh 
in O of h square by 64, you can find out all possible uh, pairs. So it's the optimization, this uh, optimization will reduce the number of operations. Uh, usually it would have, if you didn't use bitwise operations when you used uh, your own, it would, uh, say a Boolean vector for R and add operations, you, uh, you would have h squared bitwise operations. That would be uh, for h equal to 10 power 5, it would be approximately 10 power 10, which is too much. H square by 64 would be 100 by 64 to 10 power 8. So that's approximately uh, 1 point something into 10 power 8. This is enough to get AC in this problem. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so the, the, the important part is to identify that, uh, is to identify how to do the problem using Boolean arrays and use bitwise operators uh, as near brute approach or close to brute approach gets you uh, 100 points. Uh, if you know to use the bitwise uh, bit set data structure. Uh, and that's it for this lecture. Thank you for watching.